Welcome to Chopped and Rooks. What's really going down? Welcome to motherfucking Chopped and Roots. It's your girl, Young Roots, yet again. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and press that subscribe button. Push that bell so you can have the notifications whenever I post a new video. I really wanted to come and see if y'all really bang with my uh, with my background. I'm trying new things. I'm trying to see, you know, how the lighting gets better or what to do. Because, you know, eventually I do want to... I do want to post makeup tutorials man i'm nervous man not really just because i don't know how to do makeup or anything like that it's just like you know it's when i it's my it's my time i'm listening to music when i'm doing it uh you know i'm very vulnerable you know what i'm saying so like to bring y'all into my shit you know it's a little i'm a little nervous i'm a little nervous but it's coming the content is coming um yeah, I got the new lighting. I want to say that everybody that really support your girl, I'm going to call y'all my goons. Like, we're going to be CRG. We're going to be CRG gang, okay? We're going to be Chopped and Rooks goons, baby. And so, welcome back, goons. I don't even know what to say. Like, I like my goons. Down low, down low, down low, down low, down low, down low, down low. I like my goons. Way back, way back, way back, way back, way back, way back. Way back. Yeah, I like you feel like you're beat down low. My goons, welcome back. My goons, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I got a few little things that I want to go over today. You know, I wanted to do a tutorial, but then I realized I don't want to. So I'm not going to do one today. So I just wanted to come to y'all and a little chit chat, a little chit chat. I got my wine. Um, and we're just going to have a little small talk, a little small gathering, gather around. Um, first I want to say, how was everybody's Valentine's Day? Mine was bullshit. Very, very much made me aware of how single I motherfucking am. And I didn't want no dick from no random stranger. I kind of want a connection with a motherfucker. So I can't just be going around, um, trying to get some dick. Cause you don't know what these motherfuckers got. And they ain't shit. And they married. And they engaged. And they unfaithful. Like, what's really the point? But my girl, Jen got me a rose and she got me a galentine's gift and it's full of lush products that i'm going to use because i never go to lush by myself but let somebody gift it to me you know what i'm saying she got me some steamers that you that you put in some hot water and then you put your face in it and just calm yourself down she got me some soaps you know she and it's in this little cute little bag and she just wanted to appreciate us and i really love that i want y'all to know y'all appreciate it y'all don't need no man Okay, y'all got me, y'all got good friends in your life, and I just want to, I don't want to necessarily, you know, let y'all, let y'all leave this day without knowing you special. So shout out to Jen, shout out to her gifts, shout out to my rose. I know y'all saw it in the beginning of the video. I hope y'all's Valentine's Day went well, you know, slowly but surely all my girls, all my girls are starting to get cuffed and I'm really out here like who am I going to go out with? You know, one of my girls, she pregnant. The other one just got cuffed on Valentine's Day. What am I going to do? <sighs> Let me just pull one out for my girls. One time for my girls, y'all. I really wanted to come on here and talk to y'all about one thing that I'm learning about a lot. And the one thing I'm learning about is I don't even know how to explain. There's no word for me to explain how important it is um, about this thing that I'm going to talk about. Like, it's so important. Um, it it can hinder your success. It can stop you in your tracks. It can change your life. And um, I know a lot of people know about it or they think about it often but they don't really just implement it and i'm here just to remind people because there's a lot of things that's been happening in the media to where i felt as though i just needed to remind people that they need to mind their motherfucking business mind your fucking business if you can't mind your business mind the business that paid you if, it does, if it's not fucking, 
feeding or financing you in any way, please mind your goddamn business, you long titty, no nipple having, stupid motherfucker, mind your damn business. There should be no reason why people are taking their lives because other people cannot mind their damn business. You live in a world so full of ignorance and so full of hate that you have to hash and deflect and spew that hatred out on people who just want to accept themselves, who know that their transition, who know that their truth can change the truths around, the, around those who they love. So to stand in their truth is hard enough. And then here your big cassava head ass come. And you spew your hatred or you spew your opinions that nobody asked for. You, stupid bitch, will come out of nowhere, of nowhere, and you're unblended. It, you leave out a super thin. I can see that your tonsils are enlarged. You haven't gotten checked. You, there's so many personal things that you should be doing, but instead you felt compelled to talk about an issue that does not pertain to you. And I'm here to remind you to mind your motherfucking business. Mind your business. Instead of you to try and find a regimen that includes castor oil into your daily uh, routine so that your edges can grow, you worried about what Zaya is doing in the multi-million dollar mansion. How does that make any sense? You got written up because you took 31 minutes out of your lunch instead of 30 and you worried about Zaya? Mind your motherfucking business. If you're not going to help any type of situations to where these black kids, these black people are killing themselves because they cannot take living in their truth because people of so many levels of ignorance, misogyny, bigotry, and stupidity don't want to mind their motherfucking business, then I suggest you yourself go and hurdle off a cliff. Find it. Heathcliff, do what you got to do. But mind your motherfucking business. Mind your damn business. There are kids, 14, 15, taking their lives because people feel compelled. The Shade Room and their many, many ignorant followers feel compelled to judge somebody. And that somebody has nothing to do with them. Everybody know. Everybody knows that a celebrity life, unfortunately, what comes with fame is comes with publicity. You are public. People can talk on your life. It's 2020. I get it. I do. But when it's hindering and it's not helping, what the fuck is you talking about? Let's talk about Ari. Let's talk about money bag. Let's talk about these these, you know, used to celebrities, Javante grabbing his motherfucking uh, baby mama by the, uh, by the collar, by the throat, and dragging her out publicly. Let's talk about that, okay? But when you talk about things such as race, size, age, and orientation or gender identity, make sure you mind your motherfucking business. Well, I can go more on a tangent. But I'm going to choose not to because all I want to say is mind your motherfucking business. Get your coin, grow your edges, pray to your God, and mind your business. That's it. That's it. That's all. Mind your business. Because it's one thing to uh, talk about something and feel compelled to um, spew your hate and your disgust. But what happens when that the person that you're doing that to kills themselves? Are you going to take it back? What happens when what you're saying that has nothing to do with you affects that person so much so that they kill themselves? What will you do then? So, you know, a lot of the, a lot of people tend to forget that they, some of these things can lead you on towards success. Mind your fucking business and shut your fucking mouth. Bless Shakira, ba ba ba. That's when the blessings come in. Blessings come in. So you open your head. Moving on next and on the itinerary. 
I just saw the photograph the other day. If you don't know what the photograph is, it's a black love story featuring Lakeith Stanfield, who is my baby daddy. Ooh, wee. And Issa Rae, who they said on Twitter has the sex appeal of a Jehovah Witness brochure. <laughs> Shit's still funny. So, I liked it. I liked the movie. It was a regular movie. There wasn't any traumatic drama of somebody cheating or somebody keeping a secret or somebody being broke. It wasn't none of that. It was just a regular story. Issa Rae was a curator. Um, Lakeith was a a writer and he was writing about a photographer um and the photographer's daughter is Issa and they eventually fall in love he just got out of a relationship a couple of months ago um Lil Rel is his brother um and it's just a regular love story it is there was a lot of eye contact and people talked about how awkward or cringeworthy it was or how there wasn't any sexual chemistry and I I can get that but there was, but I feel as though I'll fuck the Keith in the hat. I'll fuck the Keith in the bat. I'll fuck the Keith in the, I'll fuck him anywhere. I'd fuck that nigga anywhere. So anything that he's in is automatically uh, an okay movie to me. That's just me though. That nigga got fuck me eyes. He has this aura about him that screams chaotic, but also screams calm waves. And I just want to spread my thighs and put them right behind by his ears and just drown that man. I want to drown that man. I want him to die. Oh Lord. Issa wasn't doing that man justice. She was not. I'll be the first to admit it. She wasn't doing that nigga justice. You know what I'm saying? People said it was slow, and it was. But it was just it was just a regular love story. The way it ended, very stupid. It just ended. They went into a concert, and it ended. You know, some people, they did have their um, say with that. But, you know, albeit, even though it was slow, even though it didn't have any, you know, like, pops of, of like, oh, my God, drama, it was a good story to me. Uh, a few things I wanted to talk about, I feel as though if you reach a certain amount of wealthy, like, I think there should be things that should be done. Issa Rae's hair, as much as she promotes black positivity, and she knows there are many talented uh, hair stylists and MUAs, her hair was astronomically poor. She had these Sister Odell church bonds. She had this Yaki Premium 2, the green pack, um, ponytails. She had these clip-ins that was so thin that you could see that you could see through it. It was like a veil rather than hell. I feel as though you are on the big screen and you need to look a certain way. Your jawline is already reaching through the screen and cutting us. So the least you can do is make sure your hair is laid. I don't know why in 2020 you feel the need to still have leave out on the big screen when there are so many ways to melt your lace, Issa. I just don't get how you can be so successful and only put one clip in your hair and then it was the regular four it wasn't anything dyed or blended or natural to it you picked there was one one b two and four that's it and you picked four and that's it and i don't get it i don't get it you have enough money to invest you don't even need to invest but just do something else do something else. You thought you were doing better than Tyler by putting something in your hair and then straightening your leave out? Eh, incorrect. Fix it. I don't know what it is about black women on the on the screen and doing nonsense. Cause even um Tiffany Haddish in Like a Boss with that white lady, she had a whole bunch of ponytails that you could just shake, drawstring, and go. Absolutely not. What we're not going to do is that. There should be no reason in 2020 that our black uh, media community is trash. Why only one clip in Issa? 
Huh? That's why they keep comparing you to Gucci. Because Gucci would have never done that. Gucci would have never did that. Lil Rel, honestly, was one of the best free. He was a co comedy relief. He was perfect. He did what he had to do. Him and his family did what he had to do. Um, there's a, a guy on social media where he does these uh, movies. He does like these, this is how a BET movie would act. This is how, um, he does these little clips and he reenacts them himself with different types of ways and stuff like that. Where the hell you been? I was with Brianna. I didn't know, we didn't know the movie was going to be that long. I'm sorry. I don't give a damn. If I ask you to be in this motherfucking house by a certain time, that's what I expect. Am I understood, little girl? Yes, ma'am. And furthermore, who the fuck was that? I was with Brianna. Who the fuck was it? That was Brianna. If you don't tell me who it was, you will not be leaving this house ever. You will go to school, come home, and church. That's it. It was Tyrone. Where y'all go? We just went to his house. <laughs> to his house or his mama's house? His mama house. You smell like rubber. I don't know, mama. It probably was his tires and stuff. You know? No, baby. I ain't talking about that type of rubber. You fucking? Huh? Are you penetrating? Are you are you having sex? Don't act stupid. I'll pop you right in your motherfucking mama. mouth. I'm already on to you, Cabria. And I will tell you this. And I won't tell you this no more. You want to be grown so motherfucking bad, hanging out with dirty little boys and shit like that, having sex? You bet not, you bet not fix your motherfucking lips to tell me that you're pregnant. Do you hear me? We didn't even do nothing. We were just I don't give a damn. Movie. I don't, I don't give a damn. Accidents can motherfucking happen. The condom can break any motherfucking thing. If you decide that you want to motherfucking go get pregnant, since you fucking, you're going to have to find somewhere to go. You can't go stay with that nigga. Can you? Because that's his mama house. There's uh, moments in the in the photograph where Issa's mom, her mom, because they do a parallel storyline where they see where you see Issa's mom. Her mom is typical. Like it was like I saw it on Twitter already. She was just so bad. You need to. She she had niggas in and out. She was just a regular. Just it was just like a baby boy thing. Like I was just like, ugh, yuck. Okay, you know, that was really stereotypical. It was a good movie. It was an okay movie. I suggest you see it on Tuesday so you can get that $5 popping because, or you see it with, a, with your man or your woman. Um, and if, you're, if you saw the photograph, what did you think? You know, if you liked it, why? If you didn't like it, Tell me why. I understand either or. But, you know, it's refreshing to see a black story that doesn't have to deal with somebody being broke or somebody fixing somebody up. Like, sometimes we just want to be two successful black people falling in love. I just wanted to see how y'all Valentine's Day was. Wanted to talk to y'all about the photograph. And I wanted to remind everybody to mind their motherfucking business. Uh, watch out for some new content, you know. Um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, comment something beautiful in the comment section. Um, why you here though? Watch these for me. And then rock me. And like a pothole.